Okay, I want to give you a little bit of an idea of where we are and why we are here. So this is the tip of Tangipaho Parish. It's a low-lying area. So when we're traveling around, we, we want to take a look at where the water's going to see if it's overlapping certain sections, especially where people live. This is Manchac Pass, so this water comes from Lake Pontchartrain, goes over here to Lake Moripa. Now, uh, in a different situation, that water could be uh, going into this area right now, but that hasn't happened. In fact, when we talked with the Tangipaho, Jivaho uh, president, he told us that what he's really worried about is what happens when the storm makes landfall because uh, this, uh, the winds can push that water over here across the roads. And that brings us to Mittendorf's and why uh, the owner here has taken uh, extra precautions, uh, as I'm going to show you in a little bit. But I do want to talk about the restaurant uh, because it actually has been affected by the rising water here in this area before Katrina as well as Isaac. Now, with Isaac, um, you see the the flood line there uh, when it was affected and they actually had to rebuild and they they lifted this so now it is a uh, higher it's on a higher level inside uh, so what the owner has done is he's designed this system of a flood barrier around his restaurant so you take a look at the walls here and then the panels and they put this together now again because I mentioned earlier the president said that he's worried about what happens after landfall especially those winds pushing some uh, pushing some of the water over here because that lake isn't very far that's Lake Moripa so this is horse Pfeiffer and I, I just kind of explained a, a little bit about this system but Tell me, just give me the story, the history of uh, what's going on out here, you know, what has happened before and what you have here. Well, you know, Middendorf or this area is known for flooding, you know, but everything came more obvious after Katrina and everything. I bought Middendorf for seven, oh eight, I flooded the first time, and that's when I realized I have to do something. So over the last 12 years, I built it up and I also put my own little flood system in there with putting a flood wall around it. And then also we put this uh, portable system up here and that's our last thing we have to do. So we have stages when the water comes a certain height, what we do. Yesterday we closed the deck and the entrance to the water. Today we put in this instance, I feel like there's so much water in Lake Murpa and if the wind shifts and the wind comes from the west, it could push this water over. I built on the other side of the road out of this uh, concrete barrier to block the, uh, slow down the waves so the water would be slower here hitting this wall. But the, how the water is right now, even if we don't see it right now, but it's the height. When we get the 30 mile an hour wind, this lake can come over here. Yeah, we're already at 25. So uh, you have, what are your thoughts going through your mind right now? Well, putting this up this morning makes me feel a lot better. And now let me, let me just ask you about putting it together, right? Because we can't quite see this side here. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, where did this get built? Where did you even get this? Uh, Denmark. Okay, that's what I thought. I yeah. remember you saying that yeah. at one point. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really uh, the system. It's incredible. There's some uh, uh, foam underneath it. So as the water comes in, it puts pressure on it and it seals it. And then this bracket's holding it in. Uh, it's real simple, uh, but it takes delicate work to put it up. And uh, you know, it's you have to maintain it. Everything you have to maintain. Uh, but I f it makes. You know, it makes you sleep better. And hopefully we did this today and it never gets wet. How do you actually, uh, you know, really make sure that it's watertight, essentially, making the well, seal work? Well, uh, it's, you know, there's a little seepage here. We're actually getting already seepage in the back since we're lower. So we get a lot of underground seepage, too, on top of it. Since, you know, out here with old tree stumps and everything underneath there, you get underground seepage. Our pump is running already. We're already on generator. Uh, so... You know, you just have to watch it. It will stop the big waves and everything. There, I mean, we also lay a row of sandbags in front, but underneath it, there's a real tiled rubber seal. And as more water comes, as tighter it gets and seals it. Okay. So. Uh, and then we put the post up so trucks don't drive in it and, you know, so people see it. How long will it take for you to put all of this up? Well, we, as you, you know, uh, as you practice, uh, it goes faster. Uh, right now we put 10 panels up and this took us an hour and a half, four of us. Um, you know, we have one more area to close, but I wait till the last minute to see what has happened. Since between here and the last panel, I have a foot of elevation change, so it gives me enough time. And then, when do you get to breathe a sigh of relief? Well, I think in the area we live, there's never a sigh of relief. Any time you live in this area, what we all went through, the, the wind and water. You know, I flooded two and a half times. Whatever the half one leave, we we fought it and we won. But every, if you flood it once or twice in a storm like this, every time you see this coming, uh, your stomach turns, you know, you don't sleep well. It, it, and listen, you live with it. It's where we live. We chose to live, and uh, we have to battle it. 
Morris Pfeiffer, thank you so much for your time. We'll talk to you again in just a little bit. So again, right now, they are still working to finish the rest of this uh, flood barrier protection system. There's one more panel that he's talking about uh, down there in the distance. But really right now, we're not seeing a lot of wind, just about 25 miles per hour that has been sustained. Uh, they're all looking to see what's going to happen later today after this storm makes landfall. For now, reporting in Manchac, we'll send it back to you. All right, Jacqueline Quinn, thank you very much. And if you were just joining our coverage, thank you guys for watching our special coverage of Tropical Storm Barry. It is going to be a long day in a nutshell. Yeah, it is. A, you know, Barry right now expected to make landfall west of Morgan City, slightly west of Morgan City, between 10 and noon.